Hi, this is Gerald Salenti, and again, again, an honor, a true honor to be with Judge Andrew Napolitano. There is nobody, no one in America, no legal expert of the Constitution that can match what Judge Napolitano has to say about the facts of freedom, peace, and justice that our Constitution gives us, a true authority, a man that not only is a well-known for who he is from all the media that he does, but he's an authority in the field, a judge, uh, a Supreme Court judge out of uh, New Jersey, and a uh, real expert in the field, an authority with the power and passion to speak the truth. And the truth is right now, and Judge, you correct me if I'm wrong, is that we have a multi-headed monster destroying our freedom and really disregarding the Constitution, just gobbling it up, ripping it up, and throw it away. Uh, is that what we see happening in the future or right now? Well, good morning, Gerald. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for your gracious and generous in introduction. Um, it, it's a joy to be with you every week. The, the multi-headed monster is called Leviathan. The, the name was coined by Thomas Hobbes, who predicted that this would happen to American, well, predicted this would happen to Western uh, governments. Uh, our mutual friend, Bob Higgs, wrote a book called Crisis and Leviathan. And he started with the Alien and Sedition Acts and went all the way up to Medicare and Medicaid and showed how every time there is a crisis in American history, foreign or domestic, the government gets bigger. And when the crisis goes away, the government doesn't shrink. It just waits for the next crisis. So my column this week, to which you have generously referred, what if Leviathan destroys our freedom, refers to the federal government as Leviathan, a multi-headed, multi-armed monster that continues to grow. Because every time you turn around, it seems the government is exceeding its power under the Constitution. Example, these mandates issued by the Occupational Health and Safety Administration of the Department of Labor of the federal government, which say to all employers, if you employ 100 or more people, you have to make sure they're vaccinated. This is commandeering a private business and having it enforce a federal regulation. And it's not even a regulation. It's something totally made up by Joe Biden and his bureaucrats they're calling it a law and pretending it, it's a law, even though under the Constitution, only Congress can write laws. They're even going this far. Uh, two federal courts have enjoined them from enforcing this, and they're enforcing it anyway. They're basically saying, we don't care what the federal courts say. We're going to make you do this. That is extremely dangerous for the rule of law in America where the courts decide what the Constitution means, where the Congress writes the laws, not where the executive does both. So the government has sunk to a new low with respect to trampling uh, the Constitution, and that's what I wrote about this week. You and I have talked about this uh, many times, and to say that it gets worse every day is not an exaggeration. It literally gets worse every day. When I say gets worse, I mean the government refuses to recognize the restraints imposed on it by the Constitution. What's going to happen with this, um, th these, this mandate that they've enforced upon us? And again, they say it right out loud. We don't care what the, these, these uh, courts ruled. Uh, we're going to... You have to you have to get your again a uh, hundred employees or more. It wasn't ninety seven employees or eighty three employees. They're making up the damn numbers. A hundred. You know, who are. the hell is coming up with this crap? Well, again, I, I don't. It's, I, don't it's, I don't know where they got the number, but the number actually undermines their argument, Gerald. You've made a great point. How can they say that if you have 100 or more employees, it's a danger to public health, but if you have 99 or fewer, it's not a danger to public health. They can't draw an arbitrary line on one side of which you have freedom and on the other side of which you don't. 
The government is not in the business of doing that, and the Constitution doesn't allow them to do it. So there have been so many lawsuits filed against this mandate that um, two days ago, the Chief Justice of the United States took all of them and assigned them all to one court, to the United States Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit, sitting in Cincinnati. In my opinion, that court will find that the President of the United States does not, does not have the authority to send inspectors out to private property to find out if people have been vaccinated. I've said it on your show before and I'll say it again. If you own a business and you have more than 100 employees and the feds come knocking, ask them for their warrant. And if they don't have a warrant, politely ask them to leave and close the door. When do you think they'll be ruling on this? Well, they have to rule before January 4th because that's the self-imposed deadline that uh, the Biden people, the administration has put on it. So these these regulations will kick in on January 4th unless the court uh, enjoins them. I would think either way it's going to go to the Supreme Court. Uh, if if, if If those in favor of freedom, the 26 state attorneys general who challenged this prevail, the DOJ is not going to take this sitting down. They'll go to the Supreme Court. And if by some means the Biden administration prevails in the Sixth Circuit, then these 26 attorney generals will go uh, to the Supreme Court. And you know what? It's about time the Supreme Court ruled on this nonsense yeah. once and for all rather than piecemeal so we know where we're all going. And, you know, you know, the, using that term Supreme Court is an oxymoron <laughs> when you look at the people that we're talking about on the court. You know, let's take it easy here. You know, it's not like, you know, these are the, the most brilliant, you know, people in the world that are telling us what to do. So Robert uh, Jackson, who was an FDR appointee to the court and on the court ruled against FDR many times, even though FDR put him there, once famously said, we are we are uh, infallible because we're final. We're not final because we're infallible. Basically meaning we can make mistakes like anybody else, but we're the court of last resort. He recognized exactly what you're just saying. You know, it, it's like they, they have this thing what they're doing against Assange over there in, in, um, in, in the UK. He's going to win that case. I don't think the UK is going to extradite him. But when, look when, what's going on with this poor guy. But anyway... Uh, you see the pictures of these guys with their wigs on and this drag that they're wearing. You know, grow the hell up. What is this crap? You know, and, and I'm tired of your honor. How about my honor? How about my honor? Oh, no, 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 no. You know, again, you know, I, I just got back from uh, doing a great uh, a show with uh, a, a great, great time with Mark Moss. Um, it's called The uh, Wonderful People. They, they could have been like the people we had at the uh, at Ron yeah, Paul's. Yeah. It was called Market Disruptors. Right. And I said, you know, people say my language. And I said, yeah, I had enough of your effing crap, you know. That's proper language in that situation. Calling somebody a dignitary, that's profanity. <laughs> Who made up this dignitary crap? Oh, you're better than the rest of us? I, I understand your, uh, your frustration. I'll tell you how inured people are, that are to this. When the judge walks out in a courtroom, everybody automatically stands up. Yeah. So I used to say to my bailiff, when we go out there, I want you to shout, instead of all rise, I want you to shout, remain seated. So we did this all the time. And what do you think the crowds did? They stood up anyway, yep. just because that's, that's what they're accustomed to. But the British uh, system, and I'm not a, a fan of it, has already ruled against the American government in the Assange case on the grounds that if he comes to the United States, he will be tortured in an American prison and probably die. While the case was on appeal, but before the appeal was heard, Somebody leaked a CIA plan to assassinate Assange oh. while he was residing in the Ecuadorian emb- embassy. I mean, it's, it's repellent and repulsive and disgusting and unlawful if such a plan would exist. The CIA didn't deny it. But it came out at just the right time, which enabled the appellate court in Great Britain to take that into account. That's why I predict 
very soon he will not be extradited. And if they rule against this extradition, he's a free person. Yeah, but he's still in jail. They put him in jail. Well, there'll be no there'll be no basis to hold him in jail. Yeah. Only in jail. I mean, but look what they're doing to this guy. Well, they are slowly torturing him uh. in jail. They claim the American prisons are wrong. The British prisons are are Victorian in in their uh, their makeup and their construction. Yep. So he's he's in solitary confinement. Uh, he weighs about seventy five uh, or eighty pounds. Uh, yeah. they're, slow, they're slowly torturing him, but I think he's going to be a free person by the spring. Well, hopefully. And who is he? He's one of the most courageous people on yeah. the planet. Yeah. What did he do? He revealed that the American government was using drones to kill civilians in Afghanistan, laughing about it and covering it up. And for that, the American government, it's not even the same government. This happened in the George W. Bush administration. And since then, every DOJ has pursued him zealously. Terrible. And talking about drones, how about that guy that America loved? You know, Barack Obama, folks, folks, quoted in the book, Double Down, I'm really good at killing people with all his drone strikes. Barack Obama, as far as I know, is the only American president to use drones to kill Americans yep. uh, without apology, without explanation, oh. without justification, without uh, a warrant, without uh, a trial, and basically claimed he had authority for it. And when the Justice Department finally released its authority, its authority was, well, if a bank robber is robbing a bank and racing away in his car, and shooting at the police who are chasing him, the police can shoot at him. That's the analogy <laughs> to which they, from which they justified blowing people up who were sitting at a cafe yeah. in the desert in Yemen having a cup of uh, of uh, coffee, even though they were born in the United States. Yeah, no, just just disgusting. I call him the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner, yeah. and that's what the Nobel Peace. Look at that other guy they got over there in Ethiopia. You know, that that started the Tigray War. Another Nobel Peace Prize winner. A piece of crap. It's anyway. The, it's the elite rewarding their own, Gerald. You got it. Judge, that's why you're so important, and that's why America needs your voice, your spirit, and your knowledge. Because what you know and, and the facts behind what you know and your legal expertise, no one could match, no one could touch. You are the voice of American freedom that we need so desperately. And everyone listening, by the way, make sure you tune in to Judge Napolitano's uh, podcasts. We got Judging Freedom. You can't get a better term than that, the Judge <laughs> Judging Freedom and JudgeNap.com. And um, please go to his podcasts. He has great, great guests on. You just had Rand Paul on, didn't you? Yes, yes. I had about 20 or 25 minutes with Senator Paul uh, yesterday on, on everything from does anybody make arguments on the floor of the Senate that this, this legislation is unconstitutional? He goes, yeah, it's a, a Congressman Massey in the House and me in the Senate, and, and nobody really uh, pays attention to yeah. us. He ripped into Dr. Fauci. Gerald, he sounded like you on Dr. Fauci, and of course he speaks with great authority because he himself uh, is a doctor. Uh, and he had some very interesting comments about the Russian troops on the border of the Ukraine. You know what? Putin could do what he wants with his own Russian troops. Why should we get involved? Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, look, I wrote about extensively when the Ukraine, under under the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner, Barack Obama, and what was that woman's name? Newland, uh, uh, Victoria Newland, yeah, under him, yeah, and and saying uh, caught on the phone with that other little clown boy uh, that was the ambassador of Ukraine, a little nothing of a clown, you know. F the 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 uh, the EU, we're going to do what we want. Yeah, it was a coup, handing yeah. out cookies with that other little murderous bastard, Penis Cheney, because you can't call him a dick, handing out cookies and stuff and inciting the revolution over there to overthrow the democratically elected government of Ukraine. That's what the CIA does. And when the, when the president uses the CIA rather than the military, 
He doesn't have to get a declaration of war from Congress, and he doesn't even have to report it under the War Powers Resolution. Because when they wrote the War Powers Resolution, the thought of the American government using the CIA to wage a war to overthrow a government was unheard of. Yep. They didn't bother to put it in there. They only required him to report when he uses the military. Just yeah. an example of Leviathan. This is how we started, Gerald. Yeah. It's just an example of how Leviathan continues to grow. Leviathan is a multi-headed, multi-armed monster that just gets bigger every time you look at it. That's the American federal government. Now, now in reading what you wrote, and again, this is a great article, and people, you have a lot of what-ifs here. And what, do you see a secessionist movement happening? I think it's the only um, solution, and it may happen the way the Soviet Union fell, like an overripe apple. It may come to the point where the federal government can't pay its debts, and people will stop lending it money, and they'll print money, and people will stop printing that money, and the, fe the federal government will just collapse and the country will break off into maybe a dozen or so uh, regional uh, smaller countries. Yeah. It will either be that or it will be like what Texas is doing with abortion. The Supreme Court, for the first time in 160 years, permitted nullification, permitted a state legislature to nullify a principle of federal law when the legislature of the state of Texas nullified Roe versus Wade, and the Supreme Court twice said you can do it. That is an example of where we might be going because nothing, there's nothing the feds fear more than a state either nullifying what they're doing or seceding peacefully from the union and no longer paying federal taxes. Well, again, you know, that we're paying federal taxes. You could thank your buddy there from your 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 alumni over there in Princeton. What was his name? Woodrow Wilson, may he rot in hell. Yeah, after Abraham Lincoln, the worst president in American history. Yep. The Federal Reserve, the income tax, World War One, and the administrative state. Four, four yeah. of the most disastrous aspects. Uh, and this is a former president, of, a professor of constitutional law before he was the president of Princeton and the governor of New Jersey and the president of the United States. But well, they're psychopaths, you know, mm -hmm. in, in, in the definition of them. And that's all we, we've well, had. Wilson, uh, Wilson uh, sent the precursor to the FBI. It had a different name at the time. Really? To arrest people who were reading the Declaration of Independence out loud on public streets outside of draft offices, and they were arrested for this. And when he was challenged, he said, well, the First Amendment says Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. I'm not the Congress. Hey, Mr. President, in America, the president doesn't write the laws, only the Congress does. But he got away with it. And some of these kids were in jail for the duration of World War I because they read out loud the founding document of the American Republic, Jefferson's masterpiece, the Declaration of Independence. Now, you mentioned that he was uh, only second to Lincoln. Tell us about Lincoln. Well, I'm of the view that uh, Lincoln was the worst president in American history and one of the worst heads of state in American history. He's, he's the first president, uh, he, he's the first head of state to break from the model of armies fighting armies and to have his own armies target civilians. Uh, he caused 750,000 deaths in the North and the South, mainly in the South and mainly civilians uh, during the uh, Civil War. He suspended the writ of habeas corpus, meaning if the feds arrested you, you, you didn't get to appear before a judge. He arrested 3,000 newspaper editors and publishers in the North, oh. in the North, because they dared to question uh, his wartime leadership. Early on in his presidency, he promoted something called the Corwin Amendment, which if adopted, this was Lincoln's baby, if adopted, would have added slavery to the Constitution and made it constitutionally protected. And the Emancipation Proclamation, read it, it preserves slavery in the border states. Lincoln was one of the greatest frauds and most murderous human beings in the history of the world, certainly in the history of the United States. Uh, our mutual friend, uh, Tom DiLorenzo, a professor emeritus at uh, Loyola of Maryland, 
uh, has written a number uh, of books uh, on Abraham Lincoln. If you Google De Lorenzo and Lincoln, you'll find the most recent one, which is uh, spectacular. I have and that book. That's all this. I have it. Right. And uh, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, uh, you know, tuned me into him. And again, what you're saying, you know, most people are afraid to say. Oh, because we're products of that. the we're products of the public school system, which idolizes Lincoln and idolizes most authority, but especially Lincoln. Yep. You know, it's like you know they call America. You know, I say this all the time. They call America a racist nation. Oh yeah, a racist nation that elected a black president, Barack Obama. Oh, oh. And who was the murderer under him? That that the next mushroom cloud you see? Oh no, that was under Bush. Condoleezza Rice. Oh, she was as white as this. Oh, oh. And who's the other one? Oh, what color was he? Oh, Colin Powell. Oh, with the crap of Colin that Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction and ties to Al Qaeda. Oh, and then that other one, Susan Rice. Oh yeah, I think she was a little darker than this too under Obama. You know, oh, oh, that guy Gaddafi, we got to get him out of there. What I'm saying, it's not about race, creed, or color. Good and bad comes in all of them. And what they do is they try to put this, paint this on us so that we have to feel bad about saying this. Oh, you can't say that. Obama should rot in hell for the murders that he's committed. Look what he did to Syria. It was the richest country in Africa. The people there had more rights and more benefits than a lot of places in Europe and the United States. And they destroyed it. Destroyed it. Yeah. I, and you look at them, the arrogance. Gaddafi has to go. Well, that was, you know, who, uh, in my opinion, orchestrated Gaddafi has to go, uh, Hillary Clinton. That's right. She thought she was going to ride into the White House on... Oh, we freed uh, Libya. And if you remember how that happened, Congress was on spring break. The pre President Obama was visiting Brazil. He went to a television studio in yep. Brazil and announced he was bombing Libya. Bombing yep. Libya? Where's your congressional declaration of war? Why are yep. you bombing Libya? Yep. Gaddafi was slaughtered in public and horrifically uh, by, by his enemies. And the country destroyed another destroyed. Rich, prosperous destroyed. place, utterly destroyed. His uh, son is now running to replace him. I didn't even know they had elections there, but that's that's yeah. the latest news out of Libya. Oh, and then Assad. Look what he did. Well, look what they did to Syria. Assad has to. These are his words. Assad has to go. It was Hillary Clinton, Samantha Power, and Susan Rice that were the that were the spearheads of yes. bringing Gaddafi down. Oh, if only women were in charge. Save your crap. See, Good and bad comes in all of them. The, the oh, look who we have as U.S. Treasury Secretary. Oh, yeah, you mean the former head of the Bankster Gang over there, Janet Yellen? The government doesn't have a concept of right and wrong, Gerald. They have a concept of we will do whatever we can politically get away with. They're murderers and thieves. Our government has become a crime syndicate in front of everybody's eyes. And I believe what you're saying. You made a statement that, that's really hit me hard. This is becoming like the Soviet Union. Because you, I said to you, do you think secessionism will happen? And you said, just it'll be a breakup kind of like the Soviet Union. And that's what we've become. The USSA, the United Soviet States of America. And I believe that there is going to be a breakup in our lifetime, when there's going to be states that secede and no one will be able to stop them. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much, Oof. Judge. And again, everybody listening, don't forget, don't forget to go to the Judge's podcast. They're great. I mean, you got them right here. Judging freedom. Who could judge freedom better than Judge Napolitano? I'm and very I'm very biased in favor of freedom. <laughs> yeah, how dare you? Oh, by the way, freedom is the word. You know, all of these protests going on all around the world, and that's the other thing people have to get in their head. It's not only here that's going down. In Austria, you know what happened last week. No vaccine, you can't get out of your house unless you go to work, go shopping, and that's it. No vax, nowhere. And they're, and they're doing it everywhere. No vax, no freedom. 
Freedom is the word being expressed by all the people that are protesting. Yes. And you have judging freedom with Judge Napolitano. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next week. You got it, Gerald. All the best.